Hi everyone and welcome to the Emergency Physicians ECG course. This is Hisham Ibrahim, I'm one of the Emergency Medicine Consultants in United Kingdom and today we'll be talking about case number 5 from our Facebook uh, page. So this was uh, one of the cases that I've actually looked after myself a few years ago. Uh, this was a 47 year old male patient presented to ED with a cardiac sounding chest pain He's been previously uh, normally well with no medical problems and when he presented to me he's had this chest pain for about two hours before coming to ED. His vital signs were all okay and his ECG was done and here we go. So what I want you to do now is I want you to uh, click the pulse button, have a proper look at this ECG and see what you think and then come back and we will talk about this one. I uh, hope you've done this and uh, yeah looking at this ECG uh, what you would see here is actually some signs of ischemia so we've got a T wave inversion in AVL and we've got an SC depression uh, in uh, lead V2 and V3 so uh, in presence of chest pain that should concern you about ongoing ischemia and um, I'm gonna leave this case at this stage and I'm going to start talking about this important topic, STEMI. So let's try to cover this uh, really important topic from uh, the emergency medicine point of view and from the ECG point of view, and, um, and let's see how it goes with this. So let's start with the STEMI definition. For those of you who work in UK, um, you know that the definition that we usually follow is the ALS uh, definition, so advanced life support definition. And this is the definition that is uh, from the latest version uh, of ALS, which is the 2016 version. So what they say here is that STEMI is when you get an ST elevation that is more than 0.2 millivolts, so that is two millimeters in two adjacent leads in the chest leads. And it is one millimeter in two or more adjacent limb bleeds so if we talk about um so when we talk about one mil two millimeters then we're talking about chest leads when we talk about one millimeter it is limb bleeds chest leads are v1 to v6 limb leads are one two three avr um, avl and avf so this is from the als and this is the current practice in united kingdom but what I will try to do now is I'll try to go through different guidelines from different countries and let's see if the STEMI definition is going to be the same or it will be different. Let's start with the American College of Cardiology Foundation and American Heart Association guidelines. These are the STEMI guidelines from 2013. And the STEMI definition there was one millimeter or more in anywhere in the ECG except V2 and V3 as long as you've got two contiguous leads in absence of left bundle branch block or LVH. So this is very different. It is one millimeter or more. So how about V2 and V3? Well, they said in a male that is less than 40 years old, then you're allowed up to 2.5 millimeters. In a male that is more than 40 years old, you've got up to two millimeters and in a female, regardless of the age, it is 1.5 millimeter. So this is the definition um, of STEMI in the American guidelines. How about the European Society of Cardiology guidelines? Well, they've published their um, guidelines in 2017, and this is what they said. They said, you need at least, um, you need at least two contiguous leads with ST elevation and it is 2.5 millimeter in men less than 40. It is two millimeters in men over 40 and it is 1.5 millimeter in any woman that is just for V2 and V3. And then they said one millimeter or more in any other leads. This is exactly the same definition of the American uh, Heart Association guidelines. 
So one millimeter, not more than that. How about this one? This is a really important uh, document that was released in 2018. This is uh, the fourth universal definition of myocardial infarction. Um, it's, it's, it's a document that's got representatives from, from worldwide and, uh, and they defined the STEMI as the following. They said, again, one millimeter in all leads other than V2 and V3. So I guess the question now is, why is the UK practice following the ALS definition? That goes again, it's the definitions almost everywhere else in the whole world. Um, when I tried to find the STEMI definition in the NICE guidelines, I couldn't really find any specific definition uh, in terms of how the ST elevation should be uh, to define a STEMI. Uh, but I found another interesting thing. I found in the sign guidelines published in April 2016 this definition. And in this one, they said that the ST elevation ACS is defined by presence of more than one millimeter ST elevation in at least two adjacent limb bleeds and two millimeters of ST elevation in at least two contiguous precordial leads. Exactly the same as the ALS definition. So this is the only kind of guidelines that I could uh, find talking about two millimeters of ST elevation to consider it a STEMI um, other than the ALS. And, um, and to be honest, looking at what happened in terms of the changes uh, worldwide to the STEMI definition, I personally feel that this is gonna change when they update these guidelines. So this is about the STEMI definition. And now we're gonna talk about identifying the ST elevation, how to measure the ST elevation. This is the next bit. So I guess the question that you should ask yourself when you see a complex like this is, is there an ST elevation here? What do you guys think about this? Looking at this particular complex. When we say ST elevation, what I mean is, uh, do you think that the J point is above the baseline at the baseline or below the baseline. And the J point is this point. So the junction between the end of the complex and the beginning of the ST segment. And if this point is above the baseline, this is an ST elevation. If this point is at the baseline, this is isoelectric. And if it is below the baseline, this is an ST depression. So what do you guys think? ST elevation, isoelectric or ST depression? I guess it's all about where the baseline is. So let's talk about the baseline and let's identify it. This is a very common mistake that I personally used to do. Uh, and, um, and when I learned about this mistake, um, this actually changed my whole way of looking at ECGs for life. The baseline, I used to use the PR segment as my baseline. So what I used to do is I used to compare the J point to the PR segment. And then I would say there is an ST depression here because this point is below that line. And this is wrong because I learned that actually the PR segment is a dynamic segment. It can go up and it can go down. And it doesn't make any sense to compare two dynamic points to each other. If you say, this is actually an ST depression, I would argue, why not PR elevation? So the only area in the ECG that's got no electrical activity at all is the area in between two complexes. So after the T and before the next P. So your baseline should be the TP segment. So your baseline should be this area here and this area here. So this is your baseline. If you apply this to the complex that we've just seen, then we will find out that actually this is your baseline and you've got an ST depression and a PR depression. If you use the PR segment as your baseline, actually you will um, call this an ST elevation by mistake. And this is a big call that you don't want to do. 
So let's move on to the STEMI localization. Let's identify where the lesion is. So if you're interested in the inferior wall of the heart, then you should check for an ST elevation in 2, 3, AVF. If you're interested in the lateral wall of the heart, then check for an ST changes in 1, AVL, V5 and V6. And if you're interested in the anterior wall of the heart, then it's V1 to V4. So let's look at this example. Um, this is, uh, again, one of my patients. And uh, as you can see here, we've got quite an impressive ST elevation in V1 to V4. So that is an anterior wall STEMI. Here is another one with an ST elevation in V1 to V4. So that's the anterior wall. We've got also ST elevation in 1, AVL and V5. So that's an anterolateral wall STEMI. Moving on, another example of an ST elevation in 1, AVL, V5 and V6. No ST elevation anywhere else. So this is a lateral wall STEMI. And for this one, we've got an ST elevation in 2, 3, AVF. So this is an inferior wall STEMI. And then we're going to reach this example that shows an ST elevation in 3 and AVF. It's not that elevated in 2. So we've got an element of an inferior wall STEMI. But also, if you look carefully, you will notice that we've got an ST depression in V1 to V3. And the T wave is upright in V2 and V3. And the R wave are quite tall in V2 and V3. I would expect the R wave to be a bit shorter than this um, in V2 and V3. And because it looks like this, what you should suspect is actually that if you look at this patient and this heart from the back and you do posterior leads, if you flip this ECG upside down, it will look like this. So you should, when you see this, suspect posterior wall STEMI. So let's talk about this. When to suspect posterior wall STEMI? You should suspect this when you see ST depression, especially if down sloping with upright T wave in V1 to V3. And these are the early signs. And then uh, you will get taller wave in V1 to V3. And that's a late sign. This is actually representative of a Q wave. So this is when to suspect it. How to confirm it? You do posterior leads. So basically you remove V4, 5, 6 from their place. And then you put them at the back of the patient with uh, this order as V7, 8, and uh, 9. Don't forget to write on the ECG paper that these are posterior leads and to cross uh, the leads that you've moved and write down there V7, V8, V9. Some of you might think, well, what's the point um, diagnosing posterior wall STEMI? In any patient who will get this, the patient will have a, an inferior wall STEMI anyway. So I will pick the inferior wall STEMI and I'll activate the PCI and guess what? It's the same treatment. So um, why do I need to worry about uh, posterior wall STEMI? You're, you're quite right, uh, but the point is in 95% of the cases, you're okay. You will get away with that because you will have an inferior wall STEMI that will guide you uh, to the same treatment. But the problem is in about 4 to 5% of cases, the posterior wall STEMI will be isolated. So if you don't suspect it and do posterior leads, you will never see it. And that is a big miss. Posterior wall STEMI is the most commonly missed STEMI and it's often misdiagnosed as ischemia or non-STEMI. And in some studies, they found that only 30% of posterior wall STEMIs are revascularized within 90 minutes of arrival to ED. And this is another important point. The ST elevation in posterior leads, it is 0.5 millimeter or more. It is not one millimeter, it's not two millimeters, it is just 0.5 millimeter or more to consider it positive for posterior wall MI. This is from the European Society of Cardiology Guidelines 2017. And again, this is a table of presentation that should prompt the cath lab activation. And they said here that actually isolated posterior wall 
myocardial infarction should be suspected when you get ST depression of more than 2.5 uh, millimeter in V1 to V3 and then ST elevation of 0.5 millimeter in posterior leads. So here is another example. Um, th this is the example that we've just uh, discussed where we've had ST elevation in the inferior leads and we've had the tall R ST depression upright T wave in V1 to V3. So what I did to this patient because I suspected posterior wall STEMI was that. So I've done posterior leads and let's make them bigger. And as you can see here, we've got clearly an ST elevation in V7, V8, V9. Here is another example of a patient who presented with epigastric pain. So the ECG was done just to rule out inferior wall STEMI. And this was the ECG. And as you can see here, we've got an ST elevation in AVR, but we've also got an ST elevation, ST depression in most of the other leads, including V2 and V3. And because the R wave was a bit tall and the T wave was upright, I just thought, let's do um, posterior leads, knowing that I'm going to activate PCI anyway, because I was concerned about the presentation and the ST elevation AVR. On doing posterior leads, this is what I found. So in V7, V8, V9, we've got clearly ST elevation there. So back to our case that we've started the whole conversation with. It was the 47 year old male patient who presented to ED with a cardiac sounding chest pain and this ECG. And uh, the clues in this ECG were first T wave inversion in AVL. So just for you to be aware, the reciprocal change can sometimes precede the ST elevation. So T wave inversion in AVL can be the first sign of an inferior wall STEMI. The second clue in this ECG was the tall R ST depression and upright T wave in V2 and maybe a bit in V3 as well. So my decision was let's do posterior leads and see what's there. So here's the posterior leads ECG for the same patient. What do you think? Shall we make it bigger? Let's make it bigger. Looking at this, my decision was I've got an ST elevation in V7, V8, V9. Let's activate PCI. So I've activated PCI. The cardiology registrar came down to uh, ED Rhesus to review the patient before going to the cath lab. And her decision after looking at this ECG was, let's deactivate PCI. This patient actually doesn't qualify for cath lab activation. And this is because the elevation is not high enough. This is not even 0.5 millimeter. And I agreed with her regarding the fact that this is not reaching 0.5 millimeter. But actually, I completely disagreed with the decision of deactivating PCI. And my point was, have a look at how small the voltage is here. So when it comes to a low voltage ECG like this, actually, any elevation would be counted significant. So when you do posterior leads, what happens is you get thicker skin, thicker muscle layer, and you get lungs in between your electrode and the heart. So the whole ECG will be of low voltage, which means that any elevation will be significant. If you imagine that the complex that you're looking at here, that is this small, actually the elevation here is quite a significant percent of it. For this one, for example, this, this elevation here might be about 25% um, of the complex height in terms of the elevation. So imagine if the complex was that big, how will it look like? So so we discussed it for a while and um, and then the troponin of the patient came back and it was this number and um, and our troponin uh, cutoff limit is uh, 40. So basically um, she decided to take the patient to the cath lab and um, and he was um, stented in the same uh, in the same sitting. So just to summarize what we've talked about. STEM is defined by one millimeter or more of ST elevation in at least two contiguous leads, except V2 and V3. This is the definition worldwide, except in United Kingdom, but I think this might change soon. So the ST elevation is measured at the J point compared to the baseline, which is the TP segment. Suspect posterior wall STEMI if you've got a patient with ST depression and upright T wave in V1 to V3. 
or tall r wave in v1 to v3. And how to prove that? Basically, you need to do posterior leads ECG. Posterior wall STEMI is the most commonly missed STEMI, and you need only 0.5 millimeter of ST elevation to count it positive. And be careful when it comes to assessing ST elevation in low voltage ECG, as any elevation can be significant. So this is it about this case. I'm really sorry for the long episode this time, but I thought let's cover some basics as we're going through the case, um, considering how important this topic is. Uh, and I guess this is enough me talking uh, this time, and I will try my best to talk to you very soon. Thank you. Stay safe.